There's a series that I love, and I brought back two of the folks from that series with a special guest third. We're going to have a conversation in L.A. next. You're tuning in to the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Oh, no, when I'm back in so I had a little Frank Sinatra, a little L.A. is my lady. And the creator of the show and star and directrix and everything, she is a lady. So I thought I'd play this today. You guys, welcome to Stop My Spotlight On here on After Buzz TV. I'm your host, James Lott Jr. And I'm just so giddy with excitement because I brought back two people from a series that you guys know I love and I have a special guest there who's in the series this, se this season. And just is a good, 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 some good stuff happening. So first thing next to me, I, mean, I don't even know how many, how many titles you have. <laughs> Creator, writer, producer, director, visionary. My girl, Amory Cummings. Thank Hi. you for having me. Yes, glad you came back. Love being here. Across the table, the hunk of the group. <laughs> and he is here. He is one of the he's the lead care lead male character on the show. He plays Gus. And his name in real life is not too far off. Gustavo Velasquez. Hey James, how are you doing? Yeah, how are you? Glad to be back. And across the table, okay. Her IMDB goes is longer than most people that I know. And she's an Oscar-nominated, Golden Globe-winning actress in a movie that I loved called Anna. We're going to talk about that in a little later. But she's also been in JFK, at TV. She's done tons of TV shows like Felicity, Days of Our Lives, uh, Value of the Dolls. She's done independent movies. She's done, I mean, she's done everything. And she's in this series, and she's good. Sally Kirkland. Nice, nice being here, too. Yes, hi, Sally. Yeah. So you guys, you can find this series is called Conversations in LA. You can find it on iTunes and on Amazon, conversationsinla.com. Also on my pages, of course, which are uh, James Lott Jr. You can follow me all there, and I have this stuff there, too. Welcome back, you two. Thank you. Together Thank this time. You. I, I know. Time. I you guys separately on here before, and now you guys together. There's too much heat going on in here. I can't believe it. Because <laughs> you guys are two leads. I always I made fun of the last couple of shows of the posters. And did I, did I post? The, the poster this year is very tame this time. Yes. It's like you guys yes. are interlocked, which kind of mixed for the season. Right. I see. Right. Well, the his characters. His shirt is on. Yes, his shirt is on, but the characters are going on a deeper journey. Yes. Um, you know, they're they're they are putting up walls. Yeah. So the shirt, you know, is it's on. on. It's hiding, <laughs> hiding what's really going on. Well, yes. the season two poster, not the season three poster. Not yet. Right. You haven't got, you got there. Yeah. I've seen that. I've seen that. I don't know if I've seen two, and I'm like, the shirt shirt's on. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense, girl. Um, this this series is so good, and this season, these are some things. These are the things I wrote down from just from me from watching the episodes. Lots of therapy. We learn more about Michelle and Gus. Uh, there isn't there isn't a small supporting character in this series, inclu including Sally. Like every person you brought into the series, their acting is so amazing, and they're so good to the story. Like, there's nobody's like, oh, well, like, no, everybody's good. Everybody is good. Everybody's good. Thank you. We got sobriety. We got diversity of characters. We have, I, I, these are the things that are down, gay, straight, Latino, men, women, older, younger, and very Los Angeles. Huh. Those are the things I got out of this, out Thank this you. season. Thank you. It's true. It's, it's true. very Los Angeles. It's very, it's all these things. It's just, it's, it's amazing. To, oh, there's, there's the cover of this, of this one. Yeah, you guys are and on, on a couch. Does it on all, a couch. See the whole therapy, therapy. thing. Mm -hmm. We're talking pet therapy, regular therapy. We learn. We have people coming on. We have new characters in the season. We get to meet people behind each of your lives. It just—it's such a congratulations. Thank you. What a great, what a Thank great, you. what a great season. Thank you. How has it been for you watching it unfold? Because I know, because I know you're putting it all together. You're busy doing it. But can you? How has it been unfolding for it's you? It's been amazing. I am totally blessed to work with the crew that I've been working with. Mm -hmm. You know, the one-shot series is very demanding because one-shot series means we need to rehearse. Yes. And I'm learning that this is not the norm <laughs> here in Los Angeles. <laughs> people, more and more people yeah. look at me like, really? How many yeah. rehearsals? <laughs> Even if I just say five or eight. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, it's essential yeah. to do this. And I definitely push the boundaries in season two in terms of locations and how we were shooting and how I blocked the actors, mm -hmm. which created more challenges for Roland, Andre mm -hmm. Miller, who yes. we brought on board as our cinematographer. Yeah. 
um, he comes from a music background and I really wanted to highlight his ability mm. to keep this fluidness yes. with the camera because we use more in season two a continuous camera movement yes, I saw that also. as opposed to just staying stationary and there's subtle movement it's more always like a snake or a butterfly mm -hmm. I like to think of it I, that I way. I like those analogies. Sally how was it for you coming into this kind of it was work. new for me. I've never done a one shot yeah. Um, yeah. series or movie or anything like that. Yeah. Um, I, I'm amazed at Anne Marie how she stays calm when she's got four <laughs> hats on. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I love meeting Gustavo. Yeah. The Brett who I worked with was wonderful. Yes. Yes. And um, it's a subject that at least we were dealing with that day that's very close to my home. Oh well, so you play you play an ex druggie, it says. Yeah. And they, so that so that's something that you've you've kind of lived in or dealt with? Yeah, well I'm ACOA. Okay. Adult child of alcoholics. Oh, okay. And um I've never been involved with narcotics per se, but I relate to AA, mm -hmm. my father and whatnot, Al Anon. Yeah. Been to a lot of those meetings. Me too, yes. Yeah. And um, um I have a lot of friends who've dealt with meth. And so my character was talking to Brett about, you know, having survived meth mm -hmm. and trying to cheerlead him. Yeah. Anne Marie calls me a guru yes. of, of this group. Yeah, you are, you are, yeah. And um, I really love what she wrote for me. Um, mm -hmm. I thought it was sort of touching. Yeah. And as an elder on the show, yeah. you know, I get to teach young people mm -hmm. how to survive. Yeah. So yeah. I'm very grateful to be part of it. What and also were you, being a long time actress, weren't you also grateful to get a good script? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, the writing was wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah sure. I'm sure for and Gustav, it's your second season doing this type of. We talked about it on our right, show. Yeah. How was it for you this season doing this kind well, of? Well, this work? season, everything completely changed. I mean, adding storyline with uh, with Mikey Winfield. Yes. That just doing it on a riverbank and seen in full like it was a real month of rehearsal and seeing Anne-Marie's process from beginning to end and where we started where we took off from and the therapy scene was almost like a half hour with Rebecca Metz and, and yes. some of these scenes even the last scene we did with Sally with Brett uh, with, with Peter and Alex with uh, Anne-Marie at a beautiful location and, and peace awareness wait uh, let me get it right the peace, peace theological the seminary labyrinth and gardens Ooh, dang okay <laughs> <laughs> i say that five times fast <laughs> Be beautiful wow. location and just seeing where she took the characters where she she unfolded we we dive really deep into the relationship your sister yeah my you sister. Got a sister we got to got to know what was going on there and too. that relationship yes. that scene i mean uh the cinematographer Roland was walking backwards the yeah, how entire that, time. I'm ask you, how was that, that scene filmed? Like, it was like, like, you said, like a snake. It was like it was continuously going. Yeah. and He was backwards, walking backwards the entire time around oh the block. Oh, my God. That was, ex yeah. That's, yeah. that's, I'm glad that you brought up Compton Girl because that was yeah. seriously a physically, I, I had a, I mean, I found this block that I really okay. loved, and I started them in the park. Yeah. We were rehearsing in the park, and I just found this, I need to be on the side of them, but then I thought, wait, I need to be in front. Then I was like, I need to be in back, too. <laughs> and then I need to, yeah. we need to see them go around a block, and, you know, finding the blocking felt very organic okay. in rehearsal. Right. Um, I had Gustavo's character also with a bicycle, yes, which Ooh. gave us the opportunity of him coming and going on the bike, disappearing and et cetera, yeah. which I just thought was very exciting. And then um, when I brought Roland in, you know, it was like, okay, physically that 12 minutes, because that's the shortest yeah. episode in season two. Yeah. I think it's um, altogether 15, but physically it was so demanding for Every single one wow. of us, we were just physic. I mean, drenched head to toe oh, by the God. end of each time we would run it, because we were running towards the end. Okay. The last ten minutes, there was literal, all of us were running, wow. um, and it was. I I know that I sprained my ankle. Oh, my Roland goodness. was just <laughs> physically like he was like, I don't know if I can do four takes. I don't oh, know if I can God. do, because you know when you're running backwards. Yeah. Then you're running forwards and you're going sideways and you're you have to be faster than the actors to get around them. Oh, okay. Because okay. we would turn around okay. them many times, so it was just 
It was incredible, though. It, I think it's one of the most exciting my favorite episodes. episodes. Yeah, okay. Well, that's why I brought mm-hmm. it up. Mm-hmm. My favorites. Yeah, yeah. Visually and just the content and the writing. Again, your writing is amazing. Um, but yeah, I was like, I was, I was going to ask you, how did you do that scene? It was just so, it was like, there. it just was, to look at it. I don't know. I, was if tired. I don't know if you've seen. She did uh, this uh, behind the scenes of Compton Girl, with, and she brings it, it. this uh, Spanish flamingo dance oh, to it. Wow! And it's so incredible, and really showcased what it takes to film an episode like that. I'll have to watch that. I see that. Full commitment for all the actors. All of all us. Guys, yeah. All of us saying, yeah. "Okay, guys, we're gonna." <laughs> I know you're exhausted. I know you're tired, but we're gonna. Yeah. We, we all really want to see this. And, you know, Roland's a perfectionist, which is great because yeah. we are too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, you know, he wants to nail it as much as anybody as else. Yeah. yeah. So you surround yourself with people who want to do as hard as you do. Then yes. it, it works on yes. some level. Yes. Yeah, it works on some level. Um, this season, again, it felt like, I said this to you, I think I said it to you last season, they feel like I'm intruding. Like you said, the writing is so good. Like you guys were saying things that either I've heard. Or I've heard someone say, or a situation that was similar. It felt like I was intruding on you guys again. Good. That's exactly what, you know, and I think more so for this season than than even the first is my idea with the camera work was to give a sense of almost virtual reality Mm, so that people are in it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, the settings of therapy, these are private conversations. These are things that people don't. Yes. discuss or after an NA meeting yeah, right. you know they're having conversations that are personal mm-hmm. and I'm inviting people in and also I would you know I think that my writing uh, ha- reached a level in season two where I removed a lot of the barriers that okay. I just you know every every one of these episodes people are having private yes. very very private we don't want anyone else to hear mm-hmm. conversations, but the way that the camera is moving, I think, allows people to feel as if it's almost like a video game in a mm-hmm. way. They're in something. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's just very immersive. Very much. We're going to show the trailer just so you guys get pieces of what I'm talking about. Let's go. Yes, I love it. It's I mean again, it's like so LA. It's like, you guys, it's just a, those are just pieces of kind of what you're gonna see in there. You have to actually watch it to hear the dialogue, see the cinematography, see how it's shot. And it's just you get glimpses of it. It's like you, you have to see it. You have to see it to believe it. It was great to see. Just be reminded of the time we were shooting <laughs> yes. in the water. Yes, in the water. <laughs> because it's like water. I'm like yes, I see water. You're like a water. And so you really surf, right? Yeah. You like to surf. That's the yeah. only thing you like to do. And even uh, on a Compton girl, like I mountain bike. So that bike, I really knew oh, like wow. all those twists and turns. So yeah, mountain biking, surfing, snowboarding, rock climbing. So I've decided with him. Every time he comes into on my show, I'm going to tease him every single. time. Time <laughs> on Twitter, yeah. you now have 68 followers. I'm yeah. so proud of you. <laughs> this man should have like 10,000, 20,000 followers. Look at this face. Come on. And he's a great actor. So I got a few that came to you from last time. They were like, oh my God, I just saw, I saw your show. And who is he? So I go to his Twitter and like him on yeah, Twitter. Yeah. 
So Gustavo underscore V27. <laughs> I'm still trying to crack. So I think I'm going te- to tease you because you're, you're not on Twitter that much. So I'm going to tease you no, every time you come on. You got, now you have 68. Oh, stop. You should have more. You should have more. <laughs> Sally has a bunch. You have a bunch. You have a bunch. You have more. Uh, yeah. I'm going to tease you every time. Um, what was it for you? What was it like working with Mikey Winfield? Uh, fantastic. I mean, he came to us last minute. Uh, we had an actor previously who tried to fill that role with, who wasn't quite working out. So we, uh, Anne Marie and Brett called Gersh. Uh, they sent us over Mike, l- very last minute, flew from New York. Oh, wow. And we knew we only had a week to rehearse. Oh, my goodness. So complete commitment. Yeah. I mean, he didn't even, he didn't care about lunch breaks. He wanted to just wow. do the role. And yeah, he really, I really felt like I could play opposite of him. It, it was a really friendly connection right off the bat. We got very familiar and he was fully commitment. That's kind of that role specifically needed full commitment. A hundred percent understanding of all of it. And he did. He took all of Emery's direction, brought his style into wow. it. I brought my style into it and we were ready to go. I mean, the day of shooting, we were really just like, we we didn't even speak to each other and just wow. really ready to go. But it was amazing, absolutely incredible. Wow, Sally, how did you get involved in this project? How did she? How who contacted you? Uh, Dominic Friesen, Us. my publicist, is also Anne Marie's publicist, and she was um, actually at my church, the Movement of Spiritual Inner Awareness, mm-hmm. located at Peace Theological Seminary, yeah. Labyrinth and Gardens, looking for a location. And the woman Susan, who was talking to her about, you know. Did they or did they not have yeah. a deal? Um, said, oh, we have an actor, Sally Kirkland, in the church. And Anne Marie says, oh, we both have the same public. <laughs> so Dominic called me and said, would you be interested? Anne Marie wants to write something for you. And I love it when someone says, someone's going to write something for me. Well, yes, hello. <laughs> yeah, it's very special. Yes, it is very special. And so we met at Marco's in West Hollywood. And oh, yeah, Marco's. Marco. She, she wrote Evelyn. And um, I loved it right away, yeah. you know, and yeah. I put in a couple of my own words, but it was perfect. Oh, good. And um, yeah, I like playing that role. I hope to come back. You know, Evelyn yes. is definitely, um, it, it's a spiritual kind of role. And, you know, I play so many bitches. <laughs> it just means you do it so well. We know in real life, oh, but it's in the TV, on TV and movies, you're so good at it. Yeah, so. So this it's, is a different it's, departure. It was a departure, yes. yeah. <laughs> An embarrassment of bitches. That's all I say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you, but you can, you can play everything. I mean, that's I know oh, you, can, I know you can. So I mean, I've seen you in so many different things. And I want to do a little stuff so for a second. You have to indulge me, folks, out there for a second because we have a legend in the room. I want to show because okay, I'm gonna say this out loud. I love Cher. Don't get me wrong. I thought you should have won the Oscar that year Thank for you, Anna. James. Thank but you, you did win the Golden Globe, and it was a tough year. It was a lot of performances. I'm gonna show you a little piece of your past. Let's oh, show sure. that. Let's show that clip. You had a great speech. for best performance by an actress in a motion picture drama are Glenn Close, Fatal Attraction a good role. Faye Dunaway, Barfly Sally Kirkland, Anna Rachel Levin, Gabby, A True Story Barbara Streisand, Nuts and the winner is Sally Kirkland I've been acting 25 years and everyone's been saying hang in and now I know why oh, I am so honored this is to the Hollywood Foreign Press. I know it's supposed to be short. All 888 of you, I want to take each one of you home tonight. <laughs> <laughs> You've made my day, my week, my month, my year, my lifetime. Uh, mostly I want to say, and maybe it's corny, that I think that we can have peace in the world of all of the actors, artists, writers, directors, producers share their art in all different countries. And it was my pleasure to be directed by Polish Jurek Vagajewicz, and <laughs> my script by the brilliant Ineshka Holland, and to co-star with Paulina Porzkova, who taught me Czechoslovakian, and to the whole cast and crew, and needless to say, Bill Quigley and Vestron, I am so proud and so honored, and I love each and every one of you here. Thank you. Huh. I thought it was cute. First of all, I love your hair. Very 80s. Love huh. the hair. Uh, but your speech to me gave me glimpses of who you are a little bit. Really? Because you are, because I know you're an activist and an actress, and you just saying in that moment 
we should come, this may sound corny, but you know, we should come together as artists mm -hmm. and actors and, and writers to come together with our arts. I thought, that tells me something about her, that she's deeper than just, I'm an actress, that's it. Like you're thinking about the whole world in general. Well, I am Reverend Sally Kirkland yes. at the Church of the Movement of Spiritual and Awareness, so um, for 40 years now. Wow. So when I go out each day, it's with trying to be in my higher consciousness, like how yeah. can I keep the loving going no matter what? Yeah. How can I bring a smile to someone's face no matter what? And um, I do believe what I said, that um, yeah. I've been lucky to work with so many international directors and producers and diverse talent. And yeah. uh, I think when I look at the world politics right now, which is insane, I think that the artists have to just, you know, go past that and just yes. bring it all together. And, and, and we do, but we can do more. You know? I agree. I totally agree yeah. with that. That's what, and also, you're, you're kind of your joke. I want to take each of you home. It was like a funny little thing. It was like, she has a sense of humor, mm -hmm. and she also thinks about the bigger picture. Those are the two things I got out of that speech, that quick speech. Oh, thank you. It is. I thought it was really, I wanted to show that to you, a little piece of your back. When you see that, when you see that, what, do you, what are some of the things that come to your mind? Well, you, actually, this week at the Hollywood Foreign Press 75th anniversary special, they showed that line. Uh -huh. I want to take each one. And so I thought that's very, very bawdy, but very funny. And you seem really earnest. Like you're like, like you said, you've been in this business twenty at this point, twenty five years. You're like, right now it's fifty seven. Wow. Yeah. That's about longevity. Yeah. Well, I didn't go to college. You know, when I was seventeen, I went to New York, was a waitress and a painter, struggling painter, and started acting when I was seventeen. And wow. so I joined the union in nineteen sixty. Oh SAG and after and equity. Oh my God. Yeah. Shall and then, I, and then you get a role written for you. Yeah. Fifty-seven something years later. I mean, that's just that's amazing. That's, yeah. That's for people out there who want fame. Screw fame. You want longevity. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I've always, you know, when I grew up, I admired Geraldine Page so much, yeah. and and uh, she didn't get her Oscar until she was sixty something. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, I Shelley Winters was my mentor. Wow. She called me, she was my godmother, and I lived with her in New York and L.A., oh, wow. and she taught me how to survive the business without necessarily being married to the business, how to be Ooh, an independent woman. Yeah. And she right away took me by the hand and made me join all the unions and had me marching for women's yes. equality. She, she invited me to a dinner with, with her, Martin Luther King, and, and Corinne. Hey, I have to ask, what was what was that like? Being there, well, in I, just, I didn't say a word. I just <laughs> listened. <laughs> but Shelley was a very much a supporter and activist for him. Wow. And as a result of that, I attended all the rallies in Central Park with wow. him. And, um, it was pretty stunning. It was yeah. um, so she taught me at a very young age. You know, and she she used, she used to say to me, Sally, you don't read the newspapers enough. You have to know everything that's going on in the world to be a good actor. And so I started reading the newspapers when I was wow. a teenager. And to this day, I get the LA Times every morning, and see wow. what's going on all over the world, and then try and channel whatever I'm doing artistically, you know, into bringing light yeah. to the darkness yeah. out there. You know? well, we need more people like you doing that. Thank you. We do. I try to do the same thing on some level. Yeah. That's right. I try to be a positive person and like, you know. Well, you are. Friends. The minute you greeted me at the door, you were just all love. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's, what, that's what it's about, isn't it? Yeah. I think that's what it's about. And I just, I admire the fact that you guys were like, we're going to get Sally into this picture. We're going to do this series. We're going to have her in it. And you wrote something for her. Mm -hmm. Were you intimidated at all when you were writing it? Or were, was there, how how's that process for you? Um, you know, I think that um, I was feeling that I, I tend to get visuals okay. when I'm before I write, and I was thinking about a matrix type character. Okay. Okay. So, I was thinking in terms of a twelve-step meeting. You have all types. Mm -hmm. Yes. You yeah. have the people who have a message. You have a pe the people who are still struggling with their sobriety. I mean, I think they all are yes. to some extent. Yes. Okay, I don't yeah. think it ever ends, even yes. if you're clean and sober. Yeah. Um, so I think that, um, you know, I wanted to have diversity and I wanted an older woman because I was thinking Matrix, but I was thinking it, of it in a, in a different, in a more surreal way. And that's how I think her section 
of that uh, episode comes across. It's mm-hmm. almost like she's a diversion and she has something to say that helps Alex, but does he really, does it really register right. with right. that character? Um, you know, and it's, and it's, again, it's diversity. I like to see older people in, mm-hmm. in a lot of, you know, we just don't see that in we television. Don't. We you know, don't. we don't see diversity, right. uh, enough of it. Right. Um, and, you know, I think that there's more to say about this character in terms of what it is that, you know, we've seen one side, mm-hmm. but what are we going to see next? Yeah. Um, yeah. Like you know, it. this is just the surface. Now, so with Gus and Michelle, so are I mean, as the season you know comes to a close, are they closer? <laughs> I think so. I think that they are moving. You know, you went through some stuff this season, right? But you know, I think that what makes these two characters really great is that they're, you know, they have a soul connection. This is not an older woman meets younger guy. Uh, love right, story right. that's based on sex. Right. This is based on a true soul connection with two people who have made the commitment to stick it out mm-hmm. and go through the obstacles yeah. that they face. Yeah. And so they've got, we've seen them. You know, this is a little bit of a Romeo and Juliet, you know, love yeah. against its uh, opponents I, kind I of that. story. Yes. Um, but I think that season three is going to really surprise everyone. Yeah. But season two, you know, these two people have gone through so much so much and you know I think it's a lot like you know when people meet Mm -hmm. you know it takes years to get to know somebody Mm -hmm. but some people they meet they fall in love and they decide to get married and then they get to know each other and that's what this is about these two Mm -hmm. people fell in love they have a strong connection Mm -hmm. but they get to know each other as the story goes Mm -hmm. and they're discovering a lot of just surprises. I like you surprises. said that it's not a typical older woman seducing younger man or younger man coming after all this. It's completely you guys are equals on many levels. I saw that this season. Absolutely. Like whatever you were kind of lacking, he had whatever he was kind of lacking, you had. It's right. Like, it was a push and pull. That's right. what I saw. Right. And I oh I I mean, I think that's that's so true with these mm-hmm. characters. I'm so glad that you brought that I up. Saw, I saw that. It's not, it's not typical. You see, though, this one's not lopsided. But, you know, I mean, with an older woman and a younger man, I think for any relationship where there's an age gap, for it to work, for it to really work, there has to be equal. They mm-hmm. still have to be equal despite their age. I agree. I agree. You know, Gus does feel a need for Michelle and vice versa. And I think they both teach each other things. Like mm-hmm. Michelle's lacking in certain areas, Gus helps her out. Gus is lacking in certain areas, Michelle helps him out. And it's just like this this constant of growing together. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it makes, and it's really, it is deep. I like that she didn't create it as a typical older woman, yeah. young guy, because that gets boring and it's also, there's not much to play there. It's right. like, you know what you're doing. It's just like, take right. off your shirt and let's go. Right, right. Versus... It's sexier with the clothes on. Mm-hmm. There's more going on, and it just makes it more exciting to watch. And you can't, I know from the series, is like you can't even blame him for his age because he'll say things that completely make sense. Yeah. Right. And you'll go, oh, well, how, you, how dare you say something that makes sense, makes sense to me? And it's speaking to me because I'm thinking, I'm way older than you are. I'm like, no, he's saying something that actually makes sense. Right. And you're like, oh, okay. Right. <laughs> like, and he's 50, I, I think of him as 50% boy and 50% old soul. Mm-hmm. You know, he yes. has the kind of intensity mm-hmm. that Michelle, I mean, it's his upbringing. It's, yes. it's what he went through that has made him tougher and thick-skinned. Um, but, no, they have a real... They they get through this. Yeah. They get through season two. Yeah, I mean, good, good. it's it's so cool it's for yeah. me to have written. I think the therapy scene, where we oh, really yeah. get to go. They they reveal things to each other, yes. that they don't normally right. because they're forced to. Yeah. Couples therapy. Get to watch it. It's good. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, no, it's good. So I mean, I know that you guys have to like. Not tell too much, but there's a season three, right? Yes. Coming. So yes. congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. That's amazing. It's crazy. I mentioned you season one. I mean, this is, this is, this is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy. So we have to come back every season, apparently. Um, so season three, are you starting your pre-production right now, getting ready for that? We are in pre-production, okay. and um, season three, the tagline is a passionate discourse. 
Oh, and okay. um, it gets really, really. Uh, if you think season two is dark, yeah. Season three takes it to a whole new level. Wow. Um, you know, I'm in the phase right now. Gustavo's working with me as an associate producer okay. on season three, which is really great. I yeah. mean, we're we'll see how that goes. I mean, we're working yeah. together as actors, and we've already started working together as producers. producers. <laughs> it's really interesting to see. You know, as an actor, you show up to a set, you do your thing, right. and you leave. But as a producer, it's never ending. <laughs> it's never ending. Never, <laughs> never, <laughs> never, <laughs> never, yes. never He's ending. He's getting a taste of that. Yes, I'm sure he is. It's, yes. it's constant, yes. constant, constant. Yes. And so any actor out there be very thankful because to get to be able to show up, the light's ready, the camera's ready, everything's All right. ready, that took a lot to make that happen. Right. And all season one, she was doing it by herself. Even season two, she did right. it mostly by herself. Mostly. Mm -hmm. So it's um, it's really an honor to be jumping in as an associate producer. Right? Well, it, you know, in season two, Brett Benner was an associate yeah. producer. Oh, right. Gustavo, Dominic Friesen as well. You know, because we, I mean, it took a lot to, yes. you know, producing is... <clears throat> we were having this conversation. You said to me, okay, I want season three to just be smooth. Smooth, smooth, smooth. And I'm like, okay. Um, producing Good 101. Luck. Producing 101. Yeah, yeah. It's never smooth. No, never. It's, it's smooth. never right. smooth. Yeah, and I'm learning that. And also, I think... <laughs> I produce two, I know. So it's um, never, never smooth. It's after never smooth. getting, like, we've been getting a lot of emails from all, all over the world. People telling us, keep going. Like, this yeah. story, we love right. what's going on. And with all the excitement already that building up, season three, we want to cast even the the greatest actors out there yeah. for these roles. We want to make it sensational because we we've had a, we have an amazing product here and yes. we worked hard. She's worked uh, very yes. hard. Well, so have you. Yes, you have. Everybody, yes, everyone, Sally everyone. joining us has helped so much. Everybody joining, so we're very excited going to season three. So. Starting from a meeting at Starbucks, too. I know! Starbucks, later. I realized that so. I mean, you never know where your journey's gonna take no. you. That's what's exciting about this. As long as you love what you're doing, I mean, you just you just go for the ride, stay in the lane, and just keep on going. Yeah. And see where it goes. Like, it's so exciting. Yeah. It so is. Exciting. It is exciting. It's yeah. exciting. You know, the big the big leap for us with season two was getting on iTunes and Amazon. Yes, I remember that. So I was happy when that happens. Like, yes. And, you know, it's in the United States. It's in the UK. Yeah. And soon to be Australia and Canada. Oh, good. And okay. so, and you know. And in Spanish. And in Spanish. Oh, okay, good. Spanish is coming out okay. as well. So seasons one and two in Spanish, conversaciones and... LA. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> so bilingue. I love it. Um, <laughs> so that'll be with subtitles, not yeah, dubbed. Yeah, yeah. And could you, Can imagine? you imagine? I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of work. That, <laughs> like, you still play yourself, though. Do your parts. That's hilarious. It's, it would be. We discussed that, and yes. I was like, okay, I just, I don't know about that. Yeah, what well, is too close captioning? <laughs> Where do you see yourself in Chinese? Have you seen, you seen that? It's yeah. like, whose voice is that? Like, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> I think those days are gone. Yeah, they're gone too. We I'm don't sure. really do the no. dubbing. No. Now you also you haven't you produced and directed yeah. and so yeah you've done all that stuff too and written. Yeah, I it produced too. maybe about eight or nine yeah. movies and wow. maybe yeah. three or four shorts. And, so you know um, how it is. You know how it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was lucky in that I could get all of my friends to be in the movies under quote. Hey. You know, <laughs> and um, get a lot of musicians yeah. involved yeah. and. Um, can I mention um, that right now on Amazon Prime, Please. I star in um, Broken Roads, okay. um, very spiritually beautiful, okay. heart-opening movie. And in that case, I got two musicians to do the songs and whatnot. Wow. Um, I think I was a producer of some sort on that. <laughs> and then I, yes. with Melissa Leo and Peter Fonda, I, oh. I star in uh, The Most Hated Woman in America on Netflix. Oh, wow. I saw that. You did? did? Yes, oh, I did. Oh, Sally, right. I, yes. Oh my god. I mean, I'm it was it was pretty wild. It, Between you, Melissa Leo and Peter Fonda, I'm like you can only imagine. Leo. I can yeah. only imagine. And then I play um an Asian comedian in um what's it called? Solitaire. Buddy Solitaire on Amazon Prime. You're everywhere. Yeah, I'm I'm, everywhere. I'm grateful she that uh I am on Amazon and Netflix because amazing amounts of people see mm -hmm. them. Yeah. 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 It's really great. It is the place right now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now, how's it for you in terms of, I mean, I know it's, I'm sure you've done it for 50 some years, the memory muscle of remembering lines and stuff. I can remember <laughs> what I did yesterday half the time, so I can't even imagine remembering Usually lines. Usually I pay somebody to drill me. Oh, okay. But this week, my assistant is in South Carolina, and so I have to do it by myself, and um, I'm about to do something, a project, and mm -hmm. 
monologues and monologues and I, I sit there and I get it all in okay. and then the next day I've forgotten it all so I have to go back and do it all again. <laughs> there was one line of Anne Marie's uh. that I kept blowing and I, I got so you know Nobody knew. Nobody, Nobody knew. knew. <laughs> really? Then she said, Well Sally, you can just put it in your own words. Right. And that made me even more nervous because then I thought if I put it in my own words, then I have to go back to the yeah. script and remember where I was when I started to put it in my own words. <laughs> But luckily, she wrote words that sound like me, so... Okay, very good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I must say that uh, I'm very grateful for my memory. I have a yeah. great memory. Yeah. The reason why I knew I could be a good actor was when I was a teenager in high school, I never studied for exams. And I would take the cram book in the ladies' room at night, take no dose, and then memorize the cram <laughs> book. <laughs> and then come out and do exams with, you know, even pictures and wow. all the essential words. And I would at least get a C plus, if not a B minus, having not studied wow. at all. So that was memory. That was just yeah. the ability to memorize. Wow, <laughs> that's amazing. I know. I, was, I mean, I have some memory. And like, mm, it's okay, I guess, but I couldn't. I couldn't do like you guys. I, I did a movie recently where I did. I had. I was. They wrote a role for me. Actually, it was oh my god, weird. which I one? I know. It's it's called Second Chance. It was with Vivica Fox and Brittany Underwood, and they and I had. They sent me my sides. I had acted in like ten years. And he said, I saw it was just three pages. And I was like, oh my God, I have three pages. <laughs> How do I remember my three pages? <laughs> Luckily, I remember my lines. I was fine. But it was like, I just, I have some respect for actors yeah. of any length who, does, yeah. who do this for a living. Because I'm like, I just had three pages. I didn't have 70 or 50 or whatever. And then I had like two scenes. And it was like, it was, I was, it's, yeah. Difficult. Well, you're Oops. a character. I can see them just putting the camera on you, and whatever comes out of your mouth is okay. We did some of that too. So there's, there's probably going to be some behind the scenes stuff. Right. Yes, they did that at, at the end. Go, James, you look this here, this situation, uh -huh. and we did a few things. Yes. Yes. We did. We did that. Well, yes, I'm very excited for season three. I'm very excited. Congratulations, season two. Hopefully, Emmy nominations will happen again. For everybody at the table. We submitted, I think, in nine or ten different okay, categories yes, this year. Yes. So we were really excited. It's worth your show. Your show is totally worth it. I mean, digital series <laughs> are really not just. They're not even the future anymore. They're today. Mm -hmm. Digital series are now just as good. We want to use those words as TV, cable, anything. You said doing Netflix. They're, they're all. They're, the playing field's even now. I think. It feels like it. Um, <clears throat> Although for me, you know, it's it's just interesting. I every time I go on iTunes or Amazon and I'm looking to watch something, which isn't that often because I just don't have a lot of time. I have a hard time watching because I'm I've created the one take series. Oh, okay. And so it's hard for me to watch any, I just, I look and I go, okay, that's there, that's there. I want to watch that because of actors, but I go more in my head because uh, yes. it makes it easy for me to write because this is where I'd rather be and I see things in a certain way. Yeah. Um, it's very difficult for me to look at when the camera just cuts and I see the same background that's interesting. Wow. So I you're, always so want, you're, you're changing away in the way you think. I I like when I'm in an environment and I see two people in a scene, I always want to see the background changing. I always want to see different angles of them. And I said this in one interview. I was, you know, in terms of I come from the theater and I know that Sally can appreciate this. When you go to the theater, you see everything. Yes. As over an there, audience there, member, there, exactly. There, there, You're yeah. seeing it all. And then when the camera is going, I want to be able to give that to the audience or the viewer, ah, the similar, okay. you know, but they're, uh, it's almost like they're up there on stage or something. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're walking around with us. So it is hard for me, um, you know, now that I've created this style and this mm. world uh, to watch other work. But I do feel when I go on iTunes and Amazon that... You know, in terms of, I mean, you're watching a lot of shows, you know. Uh, and to that, I watch a lot of TV and movie, and uh, this season, Mr. Robot oh, yeah. had one episode that part of it was a one take. Wow. And it was the most exciting uh, to watch. Even uh, True Detective season one, they did one episode at the end, all one take, where uh, William wow. Harrison and Matthew McConaughey are going, and so one takes, I know they know how hard it is mm -hmm. and how exciting it is, and that just leads to 
our one well, takes. Those are my two sons, Matthew McConaughey and Woody Harrelson. There you go. <laughs> yes, and at TV. Yeah, yes, at TV. Son. Exactly right. Your two sons. Yes, and, <laughs> and that's incredible. I got to talk to you. About Isn't that, that funny? I mean, she did, <laughs> I mentioned that TV earlier. She did that TV. I will let this down with her sons. And the uh, yeah, just one takes are so always exciting to watch. And, What's well, funny? Uh, Jan Jackson, one of her early videos. Uh, was it when I think of you? One of it is, it's all one take. Wow. And she's singing, dancing, thing like you said. Yeah, yeah. Now you just said that now, like things in the background, everything's going on, and yeah. she does it all in one. It's one yeah. long take. It's very complicated. I've had <laughs> I've had <laughs> cinematographers say, I can't do this. And you won't find people in LA who are willing wow. to do this wow. because it's so hard. And I think that that's, that's what makes it so great, yeah. is because it's so hard. If it was easy, <laughs> you know. Why are we doing it? Right. right, and then maybe people wouldn't tune in as much. Right. But no, I mean, you know, Alfred Hitchcock did this. Yes. So, yes. you know, it's it takes a lot of choreography. It takes a mm. lot of, um, you know, for the cinematographer, memorizing in chunks. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It, it's funny about watching this on stage. I think I finally saw Hamilton. Yeah, which I just, I'm just obsessed with it. I oh, yeah. love it. And talk about things happening everywhere. It reminded me, this is going to be a, a, a weird departure, but this, it reminded me of an MC Hammer concert back in 1991 <laughs> where he gave you Vegas on stage. Mm -hmm. And like, every, there was dancers doing this over here mm -hmm. and horns over here and he was dancing up front and the girl singers were like, I love, and your show is like that. There's stuff going on you know, there's trees blowing and there's, you know, there's things. And yeah, I'm, there's different, yeah. you know, and when I work with Roland, um, although Sebastian Heinrich did do some cinematography oh, okay. in season two, season one, I would one. really say Roland's top-notch work was Black Tar, the last episode okay. of season yeah. two. Okay. Um, certainly Compton Girl, yeah, um, okay. but Black Tar was in a townhouse and, you know, I like to have him focus not just on the actors, but the glass, the hand, the, you know, to see people's reactions, not just when they're speaking, um, so that we get a glimpse of the room, we get a sense of where we are. He moves backwards when he captures the banister upstairs, and, you know, that was really, um, I think, uh, one of the most complicated and you know it's like I even remember at one point we had done maybe five takes and I saw one of the actors mics had come off because we only were using lav mics oh, okay, okay. Um, and I was like okay we gotta stop and it's like everyone goes shit you know yeah, like right, exactly. no way we're doing this we're doing it right because yeah. you know we're, everyone is so like a, on stage everyone is so Ready. there yes so present. invested so, so present, present. Yeah, they're in there and I think with the one takes, it's not just the actors getting light, it's the lighting has to be right. The yes, cinematography everything's has to, right. everything has to be right. God, I know. So, yeah, you just... I'm exhausted just hearing about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, how are you guys doing? I'm exhausted already. I saw a movie last night that reminds me of what you're all talking about. It's called um, The Greatest Showman with Hugh Jackman. I oh, see that. Yes. Barnum. Oh, yeah. my God, there's so many things happening all at the mm -hmm. same time. Yeah. It's an amazing, amazing yeah, I film. I want to see that. 15,000 people worked on the production. Wow. That's a lot yeah. of people. Yeah. That's a lot of people. And we have five or six. <laughs> you know, we have a small crew. We have a very small crew, but very dedicated. Yeah, well, that's, I think it has to do with you. It starts from the top. Yeah. It starts from the top, girl. That's why they're working well, for you. Thank you. Seriously, Give me that's five. Right. That's right. <laughs> and ladies are running things. And with the climate today, I'm so happy to see two powerful women in here. I love uh, that. I do. I love thank that. Thank you. It's time. We're probably both me too. Yeah. Right? That's like me too. Yeah. 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 And that's, and that's, that's the problem out there, isn't it? And that's what we touch upon in season three. There okay. will be some of that. Okay, good. There will be. Okay, good. But Very we have timely. strong women here. They yeah. are here and they're doing great projects. They are working. They are working. I love that. <laughs> I love that. It's women's turn. It's their turn. Yeah. I'm ready, but I'm all about that. I did a show with all men recently and we all agreed it was, it's, it's women's turn. Yeah. It mm -hmm. is. Why not? You guys do things better anyway. I like it to the women. You guys, you guys are better multitaskers. Everything. I mean, because you guys are just just like born that way. Well, you know, even in the '60s, I always said God was a black woman. Okay, I like that, I like that one. <laughs> I like I like that one. Probably is. I like that one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Look what just happened in Alabama. I know. With all the wonderful black women. I know. I love. I love that. I just love that. I just love that women peer right now are getting their due. Mm -hmm. That's it. So you guys, you guys work really hard in so many different areas and fields, and don't get your due. Mm -hmm. 
and you take on products like this, and you've been in the business for years. It's like this is great. Well, I mean, I I don't I had no idea that this was going to of move course in not. This, <laughs> of course no, not. No way. But you know, I think that um, both Gustavo and I, since we work so much together on this, I think one of the reasons why it's kept going is because the two of us. Um, are very, very passionate and committed about this work. Yeah. Um, you know, we feel driven. We feel compelled. I mean, you want to go where you feel alive. And this yeah. work certainly, it doesn't feel like it's done. And, you uh, know, long, there's there's a lot more, yeah. which I'm sure down the line you'll be hearing about. Yeah. But, you know, it seems to have a life of its own. And mm -hmm. it's, you know, you, creators, all creators know that a project is going to take its own journey. Mm -hmm. No one project takes the same path. It sure doesn't. And, um, you know, it's been interesting to see so far just how it's moving. And a lot of it's in our hands to a certain degree, um, but it's a tremendous amount of persistence and um, staying on a schedule mm -hmm. and not losing a momentum, yeah. which is why for me season three felt like the next natural step no way I'm not gonna you know no. when you come this far with a project like this do you want to just you want to go all the way which I is agree. our goal I agree you guys conversations in LA Amory Cummings Gustavo Velasquez Sally Kirkman season two is all there it's on Amazon it's on iTunes season three coming soon follow me and I'll let you know when it's coming out follow them there's a conversations in LA on Twitter and on Facebook um, you get, where are your individual Twitters? I guess we'll start with you. Sally underscore Kirkland. That's right. Gustavo <laughs> underscore V27. Follow him. Yeah, help, <laughs> help get my number. I want to have 75. They say you can <laughs> And you? At Immediate Vision. That's right. I, like, so I still love like that title. I love it. And I'm at James Law Jr. We're all James Law Juniors are sold. I'm all over the place. Just type in my name. You'll find me. This is Spotlight On here on Apple Buzz TV. We're on iTunes. We're on... On YouTube, we're also on SoundCloud. And this interview will be up there. Share with anybody you think who's looking for a new series to watch. Share this. And they can see it. I'll tell you, you'll see why you should. Like I said before, run. Don't walk to see this series. It's yeah. so, so good. I'm James Hutchie. I'll see you next time. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.